Okay, in this particular lesson, what we're going to look at is how to algebraically solve quadratic inequalities in one variable. Uh, I've titled this Module 1 because we're actually going to look in Module 2 at some more difficult type problems, but it's going to be the same process, uh, just to split it into two lessons. So what we're going to do, we looked at doing this visually from the graph of the related function in the previous lesson. Now we're going to look at how to do this algebraically, uh, which is a route that you're going to want to choose in a lot of cases. Um, now, if you look at this problem, it says solve algebraically where x squared minus 6x plus 5 is less than 0. So, for example, there's lots of values where this is true. Uh, I can just give you one. x equals 3 is a solution because 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 5 is less than 0. Right? 9 minus 18 plus 5 is less than 0. Uh, because negative 4 is less than 0. But 3 isn't our only solution. So in inequalities, we have a range of values where this is going to be a solution. So in order to do this, or to find out where this is, we need to know where the boundaries between where the solutions are and where they are not exist. So in this particular case, our boundaries will be where x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. So if I can solve this by factoring, which I believe I can, this is going to be uh, x sorry, uh, this is going to be x minus 1 and x minus 5, which gives me solutions of x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 5. Those boundary points between where uh, x squared minus 6x plus 5 is less than 0 and where it's not less than 0, 1 and 5 in this particular case are going to be open because it's not or equal to 0. Uh, the next thing we need to do is find out the range of values that where this is true. So uh, is the range of values. You just use test points in this case. Take a point from each interval. So the number 0 or the number 3 or the number 7. Uh, from each interval, just choose one and substitute it in and see if you get a true statement. So is 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 5 less than 0, or is 5 less than 0? That's a no. Okay. Uh, we already have tested 3, but I can show you again. Ask yourself, is 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 5 less than 0? We already got that negative 4 less than 0. That is, so this is going to be a solution region. Okay. Uh, and lastly, if we substitute 7 into the original inequality, you're going to ask yourself, is 7 squared minus 6 times 7 plus 5 less than 0? In this particular case, what we get is, is 12 less than 0? No, it's not less than 0, so this is not a solution. Region. So our solutions, or our range of values, is between and not including 1 and 5. Uh, another way we could write that is 1 less than x less than 5. Okay, that's your solution, or the number line right here is your solution. If we ask ourselves, where is x squared minus 6x plus 5 greater than or equal to 0, we already know where the boundary points are. I've chosen the exact same uh, related equation. So our boundary points, 1 and 5, which is where the zeros exist, uh, would be included in this particular case. And where is it greater than or equal to 0? You can see from this previous example uh, that it's greater than or equal to 0 in these two regions. You could do test points of 0, 3, and 7, or any points in the intervals to find that out. But here's your solution. Uh, or if you wanted to write it a different way, it would be where x is less than or equal to 1, and x is greater than or equal to 5. You can see both of those cases here visually. When I graph the related function and ask myself, where is this equation or function less than 0? It's less than 0. So the first example, it's less than 0 here which is what we have already seen in this solution on the left. Uh, if I ask myself, where is this function greater than or equal to 0? It's equal to 0 right here, and it's greater than or equal to 0 in these two regions here. So you can see that solution right here. So visually, the representation is the same as when solving it algebraically. Uh, let's just do a couple more really quickly. Uh, you're going to see some different problems dealing with these, but the same type of idea. So what we first of all want to do is find out where the boundary points are of this particular problem. So the boundary points of this particular problem are where x times 4 minus x is equal to negative 5. That's where your boundary is going to be. Okay, in this case, since our boundaries are not included, they're going to be open. So in order to solve this, what I want to do is somehow put this into standard form. So it's 4x minus x squared equals negative 5. And if I put this into standard form, make one side equal 0, what I'm going to have is 0 is equal to x squared minus 4x minus 5. And that gives me, I can factor this guy, of x plus 1 
x minus 5. So it gives me boundary points of x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to 5. Those boundaries from where x times 4 minus x is less than negative 5 exist at negative 1 and 5 and are not included. So the last thing you need to do is find out which intervals represent the solutions to this particular problem. Again, I can choose values that exist in the intervals. You want to choose the easiest numbers possible. If I choose negative 2 and substitute into the inequality, you ask yourself, is negative 2 times 4 minus negative 2 less than negative 5? So is negative 2 times 6 less than negative 5? Yes, negative 12 is less than negative 5. So this region here is a solution. Okay. When I test 0 in the original inequality, I'm going to get is 0 times 4 minus 0 less than negative 5. Or in other words, is 0 less than negative 5? That answer is no. So that region does not create a solution. And the last test point of 6 in the original, you ask yourself, is 6 times 4 minus 6 less than negative 5, or is 6 times negative 2 less than negative 5? Yes, negative 12 is less than negative 5. So that also represents a solution region. Uh, so that is your number line solution. Uh, symbolically speaking, your solution would be x is less than negative 1, and x is greater than 5. In this final example, I'm just going to uh, do is the exact same problem. So the boundary points in this particular case is going to be where 0 is equal to 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. Uh, for those who struggle with factoring this type of problem, you may want to go into uh, using the quadratic formula. You may want to use decomposition and look back at chapter 4 for how to factor using decomposition. Or you may want to factor this by trying to do guess and check. It may or may not be factorable. Uh, so let me just go ahead and see if I can find out if it is. In this particular case, I believe that it is. Uh, I think it's going to be plus 5 and minus 1 because that makes our inside terms. 3x times 5 is 15x, and negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x, which gives us the right middle term. So in this particular case, our boundary points, which are inclusive because it's or equal to, are going to be 1 third because 3x minus 1 equals 0 at 1 third. Okay? And our other solution point will be negative 5 halves, okay? which is negative 2.5. So again, we can choose this, the uh, test points, which I'm not going to show all of them. Uh, let me just choose negative 3. If I substitute it into the original, ask yourself, is 0 greater than or equal to 6 times negative 3 squared plus 13 times negative 3 minus 5? That will give me a 0 greater than or equal to 6 times 9 minus 39 minus 5. Is 0 greater than or equal to... Uh, 54 minus 44 is 0 greater than or equal to 10. Your answer to that question is no, so this is not a solution region. I will not check the other two regions. You can try that on your own if you'd like to, but I promise the middle region does work and the last region does not work, so that's your solution. Or, algebraically speaking or symbolically speaking, you could represent it like this. Okay, so finally is just the steps of what we've just accomplished. To solve quadratic inequalities in one variable, algebraically speaking, here's what we do. We determine the boundary points of the inequality, or the roots, by solving the related equation. That will tell us the boundary points of the intervals where it is our solutions and are not solutions. If the inequality sign is greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, the boundary points are going to be solid because they are included. If the inequality sign is greater than or less than, the boundary points are going to be open dots because they are not included. Uh, lastly is figure out which intervals represent solutions. So what we do is substitute a test point from each interval into the original. It must be the original inequality to determine which intervals satisfy the inequality.